Right, so this is the replacement video editing PC that needs to be assembled. I've just taken the motherboard out of the box and out of the anti-static bag. It's a very high, high humidity day. I'm not wearing rubber shoes. There's not much chance of static. You know, I can ground myself by touching pretty much anything like the wall or you know, pieces of exposed metal. Cool, so I don't have any static electricity to worry about. Otherwise, use a grounding strap. I do actually have such things, but you know, what's the point of using them if you don't need them? So what's quite nice about this motherboard, it even tells you straight on the motherboard which dims to use first, and I've only got a few dims, so you put those in there, take them out, packaging, be gentle with them, figure out which way they go, don't squash them in if they don't want to go in, those will just add like that, so we get them in the right slots, double check we've lined up the notch correctly, and they, they don't really want to go this way, but some people might want to try and force them to go that way, and then the notch won't line up, so, so don't. Don't force it. Just look with your eyes. I don't even want to push it in right now. The other one is as well. Same way. Equivalent way, I should say. Okay. And now that it's in, this is when you can also have it on your use the motherboard box as a bit of a, a base. But if you just push it in on both sides, it should clip in like that. Do the next one. And look at that. I'm not, I'm not pushing these. My fingers are actually to the sides, but there we go. The RAM is installed. I prefer to assemble it outside of the case because to me that's easier. So the next step is the CPU. Perhaps putting the RAM in after the CPU might be slightly easier. Tip number one is do not drop it in there because those little pins on the motherboard are going to get bent. Uh, tip number two is use your eyes and look. Oh, look, there's an arrow there. And if we look on the motherboard, there's an arrow in that corner there. Slightly hard to see just because of the lighting. These massive heat sinks are blocking the light. But it's over there. So, I mean, what's the bet that the arrow lines up with the arrow? Pretty good. There's also a notch. And another notch. And they're both slightly offset, so you can't actually put it in that way. It just won't fit. Although, if you do that, then you might end up dropping it in there when you're trying to pick it up. So, rather look first. Put it in very gently. And I don't have the smallest fingers in hand, so if I can do that, I'm sure you can do that. I see people like to push this down while this is still on, and I'm like, why would you do that? Just take it off, nice and centered on there, and the CPU is in there. No mess, no fuss. Don't overcomplicate this. Just take your time, look, if you're not sure, stop, and do a bit of research. And no, I've never installed this type of CPU on this type of socket. You know, I've done other ones, so there's some carryover knowledge, but I've never seen this mechanism or used it. And now we've got the heatsink fan, right? And it looks okay, it's not it's not loose. I mean, this is already thinking ahead here and thinking, oh, maybe one of these are loose. Okay, maybe we can do something about that, but we've checked, they're not. What I have noticed here is a little piece of plastic that's on there. What I'll do is I'll get a pair of tweezers and remove that instead of using my dirty fingers on this. So why do I say a pair of tweezers instead of my dirty fingers? Well, my fingers have got oil on them, and this thermal interface material or heatsink paste or thermal paste or thermal grease. A little piece of plastic on there. Don't need that on there. So this end's got to go plugged onto the motherboard. Uh, there's a whole bunch of fan headers for this fan heatsink combo. Uh, the one I want is the one that says CPU. It's also it's indexed over here. You can see this is offset. Um, if I look over there, it says CPU fan. So I'm going to plug it into CPU fan rather than system fan. It might actually work on system fan, but that's less than ideal. So let's plug that in so that it lines up with the notch, which it does quite easily. It appears that I need to remove this because otherwise there's nowhere for these screws to screw into. Maybe I'll just go double check that. Why be in a rush and mess it up? I'll be back. Look at that. The instructions even tell you if you're using this kind of Wraith style cooler instead of a Wraith prism. Yeah, I didn't get the expensive CPU, so I don't get the better one. It basically tells you to remove these because, well, they're not on the board. And they're on the board for that option. So, I'm just going to remove them. Again, it kind of made sense because the mounting holes on the heatsink fan, well, they're going to fit where these things are. There's no other holes, so what else are you going to do, right? Free up some holes for them, is the answer. Oh, good. Standoffs from the motherboard. Makes sense. What I'd recommend is you keep pieces like this and you put them either in the motherboard box or in the CPU box. If you're only going to keep one, 
whichever one you keep. And that will allow you to be able to change the heatsink fan at some point to something else that might need those. You can basically go like that, you know, or it can go like that, but then the cable I don't think will quite reach. What I sometimes like to do is try and find the way that makes the cable the shortest, because then it's not looping around all the way over the place. But over here, it looks like we'll have to go that way. Still, not too bad. Oops, missed. There we go. Got to get all four screws in at the same time. All right, so I'm kind of old school. I like to do the diagonally, so we do that one a bit, and this one a bit. And what we're trying to do is apply pressure evenly, so you don't, you know, tilt it up, tilt it up, tilt it up by fastening one first. So. I'm basically just getting them started now on each corner. First one, a bit more. It's quite nice is they have a definite stop. You know when you've reached the bottom. Oh, there we go, that one was close. Just double check them all. No. Definitely there, definitely there, definitely there. That seems most of the computer belt. Now what we do is give it some power. And a monitor so you can see what's going on. You'll notice I have not mentioned putting in a graphics card because, well, there's a built-in bit of graphics there. So I'm actually going to have some fun and try and see what it does because I'm kind of curious about that. And then I'll add a proper graphics card after that. This power supply, plugged in, you can see the cable here. It's plugged into the wall, but it's off the wall and it's off on the power supply. So what that does do though is it provides you a bit of grounding in case you're extra worried about that. And that now can clip over there. So I've got the hard drive with the operating system already installed. So we're not swapping the operating system, it's pretty easy. And we need to give the CPU a bit of power. Huh? And from what I've heard and read, you only need to plug one in for such a puny CPU, the lowest end CPU. As for a graphics card, which we don't have just yet, we will use the onboard graphics for now. Integrated graphics, they say. Really just for testing purposes. Okay, so we've got power, that, we need a SATA cable. Can't use one from a different motherboard, right? That would be bad. <laughs> no, it should be fine. Five at the back. Again, just follow the keys and the tabs. I only fit one way. It's mostly idiot proof building computers, so hard to make silly mistakes. I'm just choosing a SATA port, that happens to be handy. What have we got? Power, power, video, drive. Should actually be enough to start it up. The cable, by the way, is wood under here and well an anti-static bag so i'm not really worried about it shorting out on anything i just need to figure out which one is to start the machine it's not plugged in turn the power on so the monitor is now uh, alive and that means we can jump it to start it ah no we can't we have to turn the power supply on no smoke that's a good sign it's a little disconcerting when the, the motherboard leds light up at the first in red and orange, but then they change colors and you start getting a bit more relieved. You know, it's white, it's leaving some sort of signal. New CPU installed. Yep, that's correct. That's a good sign. What it says is it's picked up the CPU and the memory. It's got no USB devices, well, that's because it didn't plug in the keyboard, but I've got it there now. Found the hard drive or the SSD, starter one. It says devices have changed CPU memory. Oh, well, yes, it has. It's gone from zero CPUs and zero memory to, you know, two DIMMs and a CPU. So that's correct. We should log on now and have a play in the BIOS. I see the BIOS version there 914.2022. Don't think that's the most up to date one. I'm starting to think I'm going to have to try and uh, flash the BIOS straight away because I did not put my SATA drive. Which is quite interesting. Makes me curious. Got it to see the hard drive eventually. Turned out I unplugged it, could get into the BIOS. I updated the firmware, i.e. the BIOS itself. Now we're running 110. That worked so well. I think we'll just go to the next mode. It takes quite a while to get there though. It has to reboot and then start up again obviously. So. Got the USB flash drives stuck in here. I'm 
there we go. 110 to 131. After upgrading the first BIOS version, I could get the RAM to run at 6,000 megahertz or 6 gigahertz, so that seemed like a win. And then plugging in the SATA, the first SATA port, where is it there? Here, at the bottom, allowed the drive to be picked up. And basically, that's all there is to a firmware upgrade. Get the right version, don't interrupt it, and you should be good. Like how it zooms up to 51% suddenly and then starts crawling again. <laughs> I'm going to run BIOS setup. I don't know how many settings it would lose from double, doing the BIOS update. Kept the date, like I said earlier. So the memory speed is definitely gone. Mm -hmm. Keep that thingy on, I don't think. Boot order changed and uh, enabling the memory. Let's go settings. All right, so on the very fast, you used to be able to get about 18, 17 frames. So I used to just say, like, if I'm going to render. 30 frames per second video, then it would take twice as long as the number of minutes. So this is quite a long video. It's now 25 minutes and 32 seconds. So we'll give this a go. I put the threads up to 6 and parallel processing enabled. And we'll see what it can do. Well, this is 102 frames a second, so about 15, 16 times 2 to get 30, so it's twice as fast. Double that again, get to 60 -ish frames a second, that would be 4 times as fast. Add another 30, which would be double, so that's, what, 6 times as fast as the old computer? Well, that's going to save a lot of time. Pretty happy with that. 